Hi everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our first video in the It's Not Rocket Science series. It's not rocket science, and as you will see throughout this series, it really is LEGO. To help develop a solid foundation for this series, I need two test benches, one Intel-based and one AMD-based. Having test benches set up will allow me to rapidly test different components and allow me to prepare content for this series on different topics of interest. So a better way to start this series than to walk through two basic builds, one Intel-based and one AMD-based. Before getting started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the PC tech community. It's great to be part of a community of PC enthusiasts, people with similar interests where you can share ideas and ask questions and, and really get that help. What really drives me crazy, however, is when people provide bad advice. Now, I'm not talking about people that are being sarcastic. That's pretty funny. However, someone who really doesn't know what they're talking about is super confident and then provides those thoughts and that ignorance to the broader population. It's not just community members. Some of the larger tech tubers do it as well. PC components are expensive. So making buying decisions or installing components incorrectly based on really bad advice can cause significant issues and adds a lot of unnecessary confusion to the process. When you do something poorly, it really does impact uh, your love of what you're doing. So I created my channel to help address this widespread misinformation within the broader PC tech community and provide a reliable source of content that people can really trust. My objective is to take what appears to be complex topics and break them down into something simple that anyone can understand. Although I have a significant amount of technical expertise, there will undoubtedly be times where I do not have the experience to provide robust advice, perhaps like chip manufacturing or some of those deeper topics. If and when this happens, I will highlight it and guide you to a source that I trust or that someone that really does have that expertise. I plan to talk about what you can do to combat this misinformation a little later in the video, but just remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. So if it sounds way too complex, then very likely the person providing the information doesn't really know what they're talking about. The systems being built today are both based on the Open Bench Table V2 chassis from openbenchtable.com. One in black and one in titanium, and they are both amazing to work with. I selected these for my test benches primarily due to the compact size, which was ideal for the test space that I've allocated within my office, which is actually to the left of me. The components selected for each system include, so for the Intel test bench, I have an Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme motherboard. That's one that I already had on the side and I wasn't using, I pulled it out of a prior system. So I'm gonna use that. The CPU is an Intel Core i9-12900KS. The RAM is G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGP 32 gig DDR5 6000 CL32. The GPU is a Zotac NVIDIA RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. I was able to pick this up on launch day at a micro center. I happened to be down in the DC region and pick one up there. So I was uh, pretty happy with that since they sold out immediately. For storage, I have two Samsung 980 Pro SSDs. For the CPU cooler, I have an Asus ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. And for the PSU on the Intel system, I have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum power supply. For the AMD test bench, I have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. I wanted to get something that was somewhat equivalent to the EATX motherboard that I had in the Intel system, so I thought this would be a good selection for that. For the CPU, I have a Ryzen 7 7700X. That's something I had on the shelf. I didn't have anything more powerful sitting around, but I thought this would be fine to power a high-end graphics gun. I also plan to switch out the CPUs often, so I wasn't too concerned about what CPU I put in for the base system. For RAM, I have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, the AMD Expo version, RGP 32GB DDR5 6000. For the GPU, I have a PowerColor Hellhound AMD Radeon RX 7900 XDX. 
So the highest end on the AMD side. For storage, I have two WD Black SN850X NVMe SSDs. For the CPU cooler, I have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. Again, I had it sitting on the shelf and I wanted to reuse it. And then for the PSU, I have a Gigabyte GP AP1200 PM 1200 watt Platinum power supply. And for those of you that know this power supply, it actually has a beautiful window on the side with an LCD screen. You can put any kind of custom graphics on. So you may be wondering, why did I use it in a test stand? And the honest answer is, I found it extremely difficult to get custom cables for this PSU. I could get extension cables, but not the custom made ones. And then for cases where you can actually see the PSU, like ASUS has a great case for that. I wanted to use an ASUS power supply. So most of the cases that I work with now are dual chamber and you don't see the PSU. So I really couldn't figure out how to use it. I bought it at an event that I was at earlier this year, direct from Gigabyte. It was the PAX East event and I thought it was great at the time, but really couldn't figure out how to use it. So I put it in this. I might switch it out and use it in the future if I find a case or an opportunity where I could leverage that LCD display. For these test benches, the components that I focused on the most were the motherboard and the PSU. As I mentioned, I, I wanted a solid EATX motherboard for each system and a PSU for each system that would give me the headroom to switch out and test multiple components. Flexibility with these systems is the key here because I wanna be able to switch out components and test them rapidly. Things like CPUs, GPUs, SSDs, I plan to be doing that testing in the future. A CPU and GPU selections were made for the baseline system really based on what I had. I didn't want to go out and purchase additional components just for a baseline system, knowing that I'd be switching those out rapidly. And then hopefully the benchmarks later in the video uh, will show how close they are in performance. I already know that the 4090 is going to be a much higher performer than the 7900 XDX. But I'm hoping that the CPUs are somewhat similar. Uh, we'll see. I may be disappointed on that when I see the benchmark results later. So with that said, let's get building.
Remember the discussion earlier in the video about misinformation within the broader PC community? I promise to share with you what we each can do to combat this misinformation. And the best way to do that is with an example. A good example of this is AIO radiator orientation. I simply can't count the number of times that I've seen people provide really bad advice on how to orient your radiator for an AIO. And they usually say they saw it at one place online and it's not their fault. They're just, you know, sending that information, providing that link and just providing bad advice. What's worse than providing bad advice is when you point out that they're wrong, even if you do it in a nice way, they aggressively attack you, like that they couldn't possibly be wrong. Here's the thing, it's really not difficult, even those so-called experts try to make you think it is with long drawn out explanations. And that's part of the problem. They don't really know the physics, so they really don't know how to provide a simple explanation. So even if they give you the right information, the way they give it to you can be extremely confusing. So in this situation, all you need to do, like many other situations, is go back to basic physics to come up with a solution. Water is heavier than air. That's it. No more, no less. It's simple. So as long as the air gets trapped in a part of the rad that won't feed into the pump, then you're good, right? That's it. No complex explanations or long drawn out videos required. And that is basically the answer virtually every single time a topic comes up. If you can answer it simply, you really do understand the physics and understand this. If it takes you half an hour to produce a video to try and explain this, you probably need to question whether you understand the physics or not. So every time, go back to basic physics and try to find someone that can answer it in a concise way. Usually, if they can't explain it in simple terms, then they likely don't understand it themselves. So look, don't be surprised if a large tech tuber that, say, has a background in retail doesn't understand the physics of a problem. It makes sense. I mean, sometimes this stuff is difficult to understand. They may know how to build computers, but they really don't understand some of the basics and the physics behind why you do certain things. My issue isn't that they don't understand. My issue is that they pretend to understand and they give bad advice based on their lack of understanding. We really need to hold people accountable for spreading misinformation. And so that's my call to action to you and the broader community is when you see something that is wrong, you need to step up and call it out. I think that's our responsibility. And think about the person that's just starting out, may not have a lot of money and is trying to build their system. That bad advice can cause them to basically abandon ever building a PC again because they got bad advice and did something wrong and, and destroyed their system or, or you know couldn't get it to work. It really is important. So with that in mind and the system's now complete, let's look at a limited number of synthetic benchmarks to see how the two different systems compare. And for this, I'm not going to use my full benchmark suite because it really doesn't make a lot of sense to test a whole bunch of games. I really just want to understand what the differences in the baseline systems are. So with that said, here are the benchmarks. In today's video, we built two test benches, one Intel based and one AMD based. The benchmarks show the increase in performance for the Intel CPU as a result of the additional cores, as expected. Single core performance is comparable, however. The AMD chip provides superior performance in ADA64, given that it was manufactured on a newer process node. In 3D Mark, the additional cores of the Intel chip and the additional performance of the 4090 drive significantly better performance, again, as expected. This is really not surprising given the large price difference for the Intel NVIDIA system versus the all AMD system. Given these results, moving forward, I will likely replace the 7700X with a 7900X to restore parity between the systems. I think that was the biggest difference. 
There's not a lot I can do with the GPU other than to just put a 4090 in both or put a 7900 XDX in both. But I'm not too concerned about that. Some of the initial tests I want to do are on graphics cards. So I think having parity on CPU would be good. That said, I now have two robust test benches to rapidly test different components and help me show you how to do each of the many different tasks required to build and set up an amazing PC. Our goal at Blackbird PC Tech is to demystify the build and setup process to show you just how easy it is to do it right every single time. And these test benches will provide the foundation for the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series moving forward. As you can see, it's really not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching the first video in the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as I delve into every aspect of PC building. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future topics that you'd like to see me address. Bye for now.